but sometimes when ego is involved in the sense of you know i've said that i'm starting a business and all my friends know i'm starting a business if two weeks down the line i i find it really hard and i go back to a pen roll what will they think of me how your week's been or how two weeks have been for you is that right i think two weeks now isn't it yeah it's been two weeks um well i i think i'd re i I was just thinking like what would be what what has happened in the last couple of weeks and it i think i reached a point where i was like just my head was going to like uh, explode only because um a couple of things that i had applied for funding uh like pieces of work i didn't get yeah and i know i need to be like resilient about it but i think i was just like because they came back to back and i was hoping that if i got one of those two you know that would really help me um move forward and i'll be like that would just get me in there yeah uh but then when i stopped so that one week i had a um Oh yeah, and the meltdown also came. I had an actual full-on meltdown in the sense like I was howling and crying, mm-hmm. um, which is like an extreme reaction for me. But I went to pay. This is like this. They say I don't know if you've heard this saying, but it's like the burnt toast is enough to like tip you over. Like you'll be dealing with major crises, but mm-hmm. the minute something small is enough to like just push you over the edge. Yeah. So yeah. I went went to get some petrol and I couldn't pay for it. That was the state I was in. Mm. <laughs> and I didn't want to ask my husband and oh my God. So that mm. was like really pushed me because I've got like a lot of association with poverty and stuff like that. So it like was, Figuring. wasn't, yeah. So yeah. anyway, I'm on the other side of it because I think I needed to just have that big cry. Mm. And um and since then I've decided like I'm just gonna, you know, like since our conversations and stuff, I've realized like I was kind of a uh, getting caught in a rut uh, yeah. for of of trying to make the same thing work. And obviously the same thing won't work for me because I don't want to do the same thing. So mm-hmm. that, like I need to be absolutely clear about and accept that um that I need to do to, you know I need to just be creative and light in how I I think you've mentioned that a few times in when we spoke um mm. I just need to approach things a bit lighter and more yeah so so first off like I really appreciate you sharing with me because it's never easy to share the the burnouts or the the downsides and there's a bunch of it, especially in entrepreneurship, and especially when money is involved. Uh, because broadly speaking, you know, people don't like talking about money. People don't like, you, you know, not having money. And uh, that when I'm not saying this is your case, but sometimes when ego is involved, in the sense of, you know, I've said that I'm starting a business, and all my friends know I'm starting a business. If two weeks down the line, I I find it really hard, and I go back to a pen roll, what will they think of me? You know, the whole opinions of others. So it's very difficult to get out of those kind of uh, traps and also be in a place where um, you're making decisions uh, based on, you know, what's good for you rather than what's, what appears good. So I think if you found, I'm really glad you feel like you've come out the other end, which is great because there's always this image. There's this image of um, arrows going back into the backs of wolves. There's two wolves, a baby wolf, And there's one arrow that goes back in, uh, into the back of the baby wolf. And then there's a mother wolf and there's seven or eight arrows in the back of the wolf. And the difference is that the mother is stronger than the the cub or the the child. It's not the fact that, you know, there's less arrows (laughs) or or anything like that. So it it is about strength and the strength is the the difference uh, between that kind of persistence and, and, and kind of the things as you go along, bigger problems come your way like I, I had something um earlier this year that really shook me and i was for three days really mentally struggling um with this kind of like a trip of oh this could be horrific i could be sued 
right? Like I've I've been there in those kind of in those kind of remits. So um, now stronger for it. But I, I think yeah, it's 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 not easy. So I'm really glad you've been able to process it and kind of feel like you've come out the other end. I would say like with all this approach and all this stuff, like there is no harm. It, again, you, you will know this for yourself. There is no harm in getting a little bit more kind of like, you know, do another contract or do another piece of freelance work just to keep you going while you're building this other aspect of like fully yeah. fledged independent. So never feel that that's a, a step back. Okay. Cause that that's basically entrepreneurs have to be creative and have to do anything and everything to survive. So this is just you surviving to get to the next bit. Right. So don't be afraid of doing anything like that. Obviously you will know if you feel that that's kind of appropriate or not. So don't be afraid to, to kind of sidestep or anything. It's not a back step. It's just yeah. elongating a, a, a runway. Right. But just as you were saying, yeah. when you were talking about like, you've been stuck doing the same things, can you just elaborate a little bit more on what you mean by that? Well, because I worked in the charity sector before I mm. started and I yeah. know um, like about applying for grants and stuff like that. Yeah. I've like looked look, and I've, in my previous work, I've worked with like the NHS and stuff like that. So I've been like looking at those kind of uh, like evaluations or well, evaluation program evaluations and stuff. But yeah. I know that they won't. Um, I know that they won't. Uh, because I'm only one person and their contingency, I know All that right. they, they, you know, they want that contingency. So, so reaching for the stars, husband, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, like when I was thinking about it and I was talking to my um, husband about it, mm. um, they, they were, he was like, um, sorry, I feel like somebody is honking me, but I'm um, hmm. not blocking. <laughs> I'm just, just like in this else. car park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in this car park, and mm. if they're waiting for me to move, they're just gonna find mm. their way. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I was like, he's still in that mindset, like you know, the, and it's a lot of that mindset about. I was looking for things that I have done in the past. But that's not what I want to do. And I know I looked at contracts. I've looked at like things to deliver, you know, training for other people uh, because I'm a good trainer. Yep. I could deliver technical information and stuff like that. Mm. But I have I think if I did that, um, and maybe that's why I'm not getting anywhere with it. It's just like I've been trying to do that. I've been just like, literally day in and day out looking at like little pieces of work that I could do rather than um I don't know rather than just like approaching it a bit differently and being uh, not trying to replicate what what a charity would do because I'm not a charity mm. and uh, not for profit and then I've decided I don't know if I told you this but a couple of weeks ago, I decided with another lady that I know locally to start up a CIC through mm. which I can do the charitable work that I want to, like yeah. working with women who can't afford to pay for coaching and stuff. Yeah. So that we, so that I can, so that I'm not trying to do both at mm. the same time. And yeah, and the paid stuff will will kind of facilitate the non-paid stuff. You know, how I've I've yeah. rigged it as well is um rigged is the wrong word, but how I've set it up is, you know, have my digital agency funding the ability to then do free mentoring because it's difficult when you know you've got yeah. this thing inside you you want to share, but then it's kind of coupled with the need yeah. for people to pay. So it's great that you've firstly said, hey, pay what you want. And then secondly, figuring out, okay, how can I create the money-making machine? Like what's the money-making machine? It might not be the coaching, you know, as the mechanism uh, and figuring out that thing to then facilitate the second part. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to get in there. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Dan. Um, it's okay. I, yeah. I am listening to you. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> this fine. This is like the most interesting conversation happening here <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with them trying to like get past me. <laughs> and I can see everybody queuing up and trying to honk. 
Well, as long as you're not on oh, the phone God. and I'm on loudspeaker, then then you're okay to, to you drive are, off. You I'm... are on loud, uh, loudspeaker. Good, because I wouldn't want you getting caught being on the phone and moving out of the way uh, for a coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been... Um, so I've then... Um, what else have I... So I've decided to open, start this up. So it's quite exciting mm. because yeah. then I feel like I'm still doing what I want to do. Mm. And then... Um, I'm having my uh, website, I've had it redesigned yeah. to like just uh, separate what I do for, um, you know, a, a companies and what I do for uh, individuals so that that's very clear on my website. Because yeah. the companies are, are the um, ones that are going to be able to afford to pay for this stuff, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah oh, there's, exactly. a, there's another guy, I can't remember, Grant Cordone. His like three things are like, you know, who's got my money? What do they want? And how do I get in front of them? And those three things yeah. are, are his drivers. So for you, it might be, as you said, you've segmented it to be like individuals might not necessarily have the income to support a coaching program. Cool. So let's yeah. go to the corporations. What can you create? What can you productize, put together, and then start approaching? So all the principles that we've learned around, you know, cold emails or, or phone calls or networking to find those individuals say hey I, I do this kind of coaching or, or this kind of program or I can consult on this would you like me to come in to do a talk you know my fees are x or, or something you know very very light yeah. again we know that it's a long game um, and, and it might take mm. a few times and what you might want to do is a b test which is basically send you know a bunch of emails selling one particular product and then a bunch of emails selling a different type mm -hmm. of product you know so you could kind of feel out what what do people want you know again like a yeah. kind of asking questions um and kind of maybe it's a case of like what i'm trying to do right now i'm trying to email a bunch of um, business owners uh, that have a, a a reasonably high turnover a reasonably high revenue um in in wales to see if i can just chat to them and meet them and it's funny how mm. you know i've sent hundreds of emails i've probably got five or six replies but they're very like what is what is this who are you and how is this going to benefit me you, you know so I, I think it's difficult even asking them, hey, can I ask, can I interview you? Let alone me trying to sell a product. So mm. I'm not, I'm not even trying to sell a product. I'm like, hey, I'd love to know how you started your business, how you got your customers, like what makes you tick. And they're really like standoffish, yeah. which is fine, right? Like, cool. Like it's at least it's yeah. not my product, you know, that I like it's just <laughs> networking. But it is um yeah. it is difficult. And and yeah, the, the, there's always the um the kind of the time pressure like you said if you prior prior to this had a little bit of a difficult time and a bit of a kind of a breakdown or, or kind of burnout then you want to make sure that you don't get to that extreme now that extreme probably was multiple things but probably one of the biggest things is like you know the pressure to to make money as well right like that that is one of the biggest things that entrepreneurs feel the pressure to keep on extending that runway so again yeah. how can you put in mechanisms to to deal with that um uh, as soon as possible or, or like as route one then everything else will fall into place you know because that's the biggest pressure yeah. yeah and because i've like never ever financially been dependent in my life mm. like never since 16 when i started working and never have ever mm. like that was what gave me my strength so now it's not I thought, oh, a year, a year is okay, and then I'll make enough money to repay James and all that. But mm -hmm. then it's not happened, so it's like uh, I don't know that that sense of like uh, being vulnerable. Even though mm -hmm. he's my husband and he's not like he's more than happy to support me and stuff. Yeah. Thankfully, he's getting some really. He, he also works as a contractor, but he's got a he, because he's a technical um data something something yeah. um you know he he's he has a niche clear niche and mm. technical skills so thankfully that it doesn't affect the family as such it's yeah. just my own and it's not even pride it's just like i know that and that's what i advocate to all the women is financial like independence mm. you know it it kind of liberates you anyway yeah so then uh, i think did, it is good that you've had the discussions because I think there's nothing worse than, you know, resentment happening in, in that kind of situation, like relationally as well. And I think, um, yeah, being able to help each other out in that unity of marriage it, it is exactly what marriage is about, right? 
you can you can do this because of this yeah. second person here so using the benefit to a degree to, to get to this bit over here to then be like okay cool now we're over here but without this unity we wouldn't have got to you know all that stuff is is good yeah yeah well i did my podcast i am still doing my podcast good. um I, I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to it, but it's just me. Uh, I have. I show. listened to all the episodes that you put in um, last week or when you sent it through, I listened through to them. So, yeah, it's, right. it's really good. Well, yeah, but in my family, my Anglo-Indian family are not very happy, <laughs> happy about me um, doing it. But then that's the reason why I want to do it is because... And they don't need to listen to it. You're, right? You're like, it doesn't need, need to be linked to you. It can be cool i've yeah. stopped doing it oh i've renamed it to this so i'll never find it you know i think again yeah you need to do what brings you joy as long as it's not you know yeah dragging anybody which it's not it's actually insightful and, uh, and actually brings a lot of history and, and, and culture and kind of awareness i think that's that's good like we need we need more content like that generally speaking as a society yeah well i'm mm. trying a lot of things like personally as well as um, like through my company, I'm trying, I've managed, uh, I've spoken to a company locally, like they're called Active Lancashire. And I sp they've asked if I can like deliver some anti-racism type of training for their staff, which awesome. would be good. Um, yeah. they, because they've got like 50 staff, but at least it will be, you know, like it's something I can say I've done. So yeah, and then um, that could be your thing, right? You're selling um, kind of like anti-racism um, seminars for for companies, mm. right? Because I think the most important thing is again, like you know, the visibility of this happening in a moment is important. But what's even more important yeah. is the consistency of after the fact when the cameras have gone away, when you know the media storm has gone away. It's that consistency. So again, you could be like, hey. I do this really um, simple seminar uh, that that's just you know bringing these kind of things and we talk through these stuff because it needs to be an ongoing conversation. You know, it's all about yeah. belonging and you know whatever that perspective is. Uh, is that going to be a, a cost? You're, you're going to be paid for those seminars, right, or the sessions? You do, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I'm doing yeah, that, that like could be your these... thing, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, because I've done something in two other organizations, I've done something similar. So I that's mm. how I said like I've done this. And I do it quite customized to what then, like what the CEO feels the need of the organization is. Yeah. And so in this particular one, they were um, the disconnect between like the Black Lives Matter is something in the US and not real enough for them in in their day to day work. So yeah. how to relate, help them relate that it is it is the same thing, even if it's not as drastic as someone's life being lost. So yeah, that's, and super that's interesting. what I want to do. Mm. Yeah. The, the bringing in the contextual relevance to this company, this culture and people's day-to-day -day lives. I think that's really, really interesting because I think the, like even the F1 is a great example. I'm not sure if you saw what happened with Lewis Hamilton and stuff, but that is a great discussion point. Oh to um to kind of some you know racism that's inbuilt in a system you know like and potentially you could utilize more day-to-day -day, more kind of um localized stuff that that has the the relevance rather than the oh it's this out distant oh it's this american thing well actually let's look at you know this example here with formula yeah. one with lewis hamilton right if you're ahead seven nil and then the the referee decides to say next goal wins you know there's an injustice here so how do we deal with this? You know, what happens if this is happening in our workplace? You know, what does that look like? You know, so I think this could be a really interesting, you know, case study for you to to do. So when you do the seminar, you know, if you're able to to kind of put together a case study, that then becomes your, hey, I did this case study for this, you know, anti-racism course. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the result of it. Uh, I, I'm actually performing some and booking people in for the next quarter. Would you like, would you be interested? You know, and then that could be your, your thing that you uh, you find the right people in HR or or kind of senior management yeah. to uh, to target. I don't know whether it's my marketing that's wrong, you know, like because I've like for example the still I rise uh, for women from ethnic BME women, 
I've um, done that in October and I'm doing it again in March. And I've already had like eight, eight women sign up. And I don't know if it's that I'm not marketing it right or, um, you know, what, like, what am I, if I'm like, it seems like I need to spend some time. I know we spoke about this last time about doing case studies and using the mm-hmm. testimonies to tell the stories of the women, uh, of the of the people I've worked with. Mm-hmm. And I was speaking to a coach of mine who said uh, she she was suggesting to brand because when I was telling her how I coach, which is really quite like I don't follow the textbook style of coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, you know, why not like brand it as something and then you can then give examples of like real life examples that you can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, if you just say like, uh, I'll do like reclaim your power, which is mm-hmm. what I was initially sharing it as, yeah. then reclaim your power can doesn't like it doesn't tell people what how it will change their day to day life. Yeah, I, I think um, the the buzzwords, um, to put it politely, it sometimes just doesn't land with the type of culture that we have right now. You know, Black Lives Matter. You know, the, the most important thing um, in there is not necessarily just the words. You know, inclusion and stuff. It's like, what does that mean? Like, really, inclusion and diversity is all about feeling like you belong and what what does belonging mean i want you to feel like you can be the person that you are when you sing in the shower that person right when you're singing in the shower you're completely you that person is consistent when you then come to work that you feel like you can be that person that you are it's that right it's the the story so removing those kind of buzzwords and trying to get to the thing but it's yeah Yeah. as as you said through a story or a visualization that the challenger I think it's called the Challenger Sales or the Sales Challenger book yeah, that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Book. That yeah. that kind of touches on some of the story um, kind of aspect to things. Uh, and what I would also say, it broadly feels like there's, you know, uncertainty is the biggest hurdle um, to kind of progress, right? So it feels like, you know, there's uncertainty in marketing, you know, uncertainty like, well, I've been trying to do this charity mm-hmm. stuff, but maybe it's over here. And I guess some of the ways to to expand some of that is to just, delegate it out to others so this is why testimonies work right this is why when we were saying hey could you describe how you felt before and how you feel now or or even like how would you um kind of describe uh, where you want to be in the future what kind of words are you using you know and get people to to give you the answer right Uh, so it can either be like hey here's a bunch of names that i've come up with which one do you prefer or, or what do these mean to you? Or is it that you say, hey, I'm starting a coaching business and it's about this. Like, how would you uh, explain it back to a friend? You know, again, just, just delegate the responsibility a little bit so then you don't feel pressure, right? Because ultimately yeah. that's that's the feeling, right? You feel pressured, but do I do this? Do I do this? Well, sometimes it's like, just go with one of them. And if it doesn't work out, it's fine because you can pivot because you are the boss, other times like i'm not sure which to go with so ask someone else and get them to tell you you'll soon find out actually this doesn't fit for me and then you make a decision or it does fit and actually yeah i'll run with this because it's kind of a community driven uh like exercise and i think that just to add like finally as well the the kind of the coaching stuff uh, that you're running it might be worth like like this mechanism that i've used offering yeah. something for for free completely free so not even the whole pay what you yeah. want just be like two sessions for free. You'll then meet some really interesting people People like you and I have met through this mechanism, which has been great. And yeah. then if it tumbles into something, great. If it doesn't, that's also great. The most important thing is, you know, someone's had a taste. Like I'm recording these. So one, you benefit from it, um, say if I'm to write notes, but also I can then put this on a website to say, hey, these are kind of the coaching things I've done. You know, can, can you, yeah. have you got a coaching session that you could record and just put put live, you know? and kind of yeah. document rather than oh i have to create this course and i have to brand it and stuff uh, sometimes i i understand there's value in that but i also recognize that that's another to do it's another task and if broadly speaking yeah. right now you want to manage energy levels 
you want to do the simplest possible thing. Yes. So is it that you ping on Facebook, be like, I run this coaching stuff, but I'm not sure how to explain it very well. You know, I'd love to know when, when in your lives have you felt, you know, that you've been most confident or something like what happened, you know, like what, what has triggered these kind of like developments or whatever, or, you know, start, start a conversation and maybe out of those conversations, someone might be like, you know, I feel really good about myself when I know I'm in control. Okay, cool. So maybe it's about, you know, do you feel like life's happening around you and you're not in control? Well, actually, I've got mechanisms to help you gain control by setting boundaries. And, you know, it gives you then the, the words yeah. to frame it around that like story, you know. Yeah. No, but one thing that I would just reiterate again, like, yes, you yeah. could do a massive branding thing and create this product and all this stuff. But if broadly speaking, you just need money in the bank, then a simpler approach might be, hey, let's just get some free coaching sessions in right now. You know, let, let's just do a couple of things. Or this anti-racism thing is working, so let's double down on that right now. Because to create a whole brand of, of this thing and, and make it a big thing kind of distracts from the main thing, which is basically we need money in the bank. So, yeah. you know, go with what works. Don't over um, convolute or create over, uh, like too much of a, a new task or a new problem for yourself. Delegate where you can and kind of incorporate people to help you formulate kind of your words you know yeah no that's true thank you it's been uh helpful um i know we're at the end of the time so i don't want to keep you um mm. but so um so do we this is our last session isn't it yeah yeah um, so so what what do we do next or how um no no what do, what is your usual next step so for me this is completely open to you there is absolutely no obligation at all and i think what would be best is is maybe um you know if you are interested uh, like we don't need to talk about it now but if you are um then maybe we can just chat via email on what kind of engagement you'd like in the future if at all but i don't want any i don't need to feel any pressure at all so um, broad, broadly for me, it'd be great to know just via email again, like from the four sessions that we have had, you know, how did you feel at the start and how do you feel now, you know, and, and what are some of the, yeah. the, the biggest things that were most interesting, I, I guess, uh, for you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, there's absolutely no pressure whatsoever because I, I hate pressure. <laughs> so like, that's why I don't want to talk through it. It's, it's completely fine. But I, I've really enjoyed chatting with you last four four sessions, and I, I hope you've um, you, you you found them interesting. Uh, and you know, when you if you do do your uh, Outlook integration for your, um, uh, you know, for your Big emailing, sender. yeah, yeah uh, please let me know because I have downloaded the you know contact details and stuff like that. So I've just been like copying and pasting. Um, yeah, super manual, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you do, I, I would definitely will. Please uh, let me know. And do. Do, what? So, what else do you offer? Like your, if you can send me something that would what would be because I'd like to like have a chat with you like maybe in a few months time, uh, but I'll pay you for it. Hopefully, I'll mm -hmm. be in a position to pay. I would have applied what we've spoken about and I'll be able to pay you for the time. But <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you can do like business, uh, like mentoring or, or something like that. Yeah, so so I I basically started these mentoring sessions to be something that would carry on. Uh, and that would be, you know, as you've noticed, like business is not just one thread, it's multiple things, right? Um, so yeah. it's this these kind of like mentoring sessions, which can cover business, it can cover life. And then outside of that, yeah, I run my agency, which does design work, development work, um, and that mm -hmm. stuff as well. But yeah, I'm more than happy for you to reach out in a couple of months' time if there's anything that I can help with. And, and also separately, you know, if you if you do uh, want to, you know, carry on having chats, then, then we can speak about that as well. Yeah. yeah. I think awesome. I just like, it's nice to have like a completely neutral um, person. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's not my husband. That's not my like 
somebody I've worked with or, you know, it's just yeah. nice to have that objective view. Yeah, that hopefully that you feel like I kind of know some of the same issues and the same problems because I'm yeah. going through them or have gone through them, you know. Resonates, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your time in Chester and hopefully you won't have to move <laughs> move too much out of the way of other coaches uh, in this car park. <laughs> but um, anyway, mm-hmm. speak soon. Thank you so much. All right, take care, Penelope. Bye. Good Christmas and New Year. Oh, you too. Yeah, you too. All the best. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session. And please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or look at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.